Your music exclusive. I, I, I grew up like a savage. And so, um, when when you making this record, right? When you making Don't Do It, like the life is crazy, all that shit. Like, how do you put that in? Because TC was explaining, I don't know what you was working with, but he when he had four tracks and shit, he was he was putting, you know, he was talking about mixing and putting it down on one, mixing and putting it down on another. Was that your process? That's so. When you hearing that, that's from, that's from my DJing days. Remember, I was telling you earlier how I was making mixtapes. Okay. Okay. So. I used to make these mixtapes on a four track, eight track recorder. Uh -huh. So I was just doing some of that on top of a beat that I made. Oh. So I was just put, I was just scratching records in. And you know uh, what I'm saying? And, and you know what I love about that? Cause I'm a, I'm a rap nerd, right? I love <laughs> this culture, right? And so what I love is like, to me, that's like when I, it, like, I don't know, was Gangstar out yet? They could have been. I, I think they, cause, they cause that's like some they, primo they, shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, People don't realize like Pete Primo will scratch a whole hook. Like, right. He, like, he, right. He That's what I was doing. I was kind of doing that yeah. too. I was where they only got to say don't do it. Like, right. Well, well, like I said, Rich, he 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 hadn't under, he hadn't got the structure of, of song creating a song okay. in a structured way matter. Mm -hmm. He hadn't got that together yet. So I just told him. When it comes to this part, that's where you stop. Okay. You know, when it starts saying life is great, you know, yeah. I, I had to break the music down for him to yeah. know where, where the hook was going to be in. And I like to it's explain up. this. I like to explain this to people um, about that time because you had to be a dope ass rapper. And what I mean by that ain't no punching. This nah, is real to real. This is like, Man. you know, you hear the imperfections, <laughs> you hear the breath. No, I'm going to tell you, you know, it was one track. See, today's rappers using four and five tracks to do right, vocals. Right. Back then, it was only one track mm -hmm. to rap that they rapped on, you know. Okay. So you had to be able to rap and flow all the way through without yeah. messing up, you know. Mm. Corn, is that black in? <laughs> is he, he, uh, he said he did? Yeah, he's going to be walking up to the door. He pull it up. Um... Uh, yeah, I got my wife got a whole collection of CDs. Okay, that okay, I, that I produced. So. Um, um, so at this time, when when that happens, right, Rich, y'all do don't do don't do it drops as a single. Mm -hmm. And are you doing this as like, do you know the business or how how are y'all structuring this with? No, Jed we at don't. The time? We we don't know nothing. To be honest with you, we just I, we just having fun. We just don't. Hey, we put a put a record out. Let's let's do it. Yeah. You know, um, was you even looking for any money, or was you happy to have a record well, out? I was getting paid. Jed was paying me like a thousand dollars a beat. Oh, oh shit, that yeah. was pretty decent. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He was, that's, so that's that kind of spoiled me, you know. Yeah. Once yeah. uh, and, and my partner was like making sure, he, like he told Jay, man, make sure you pay pay DJ. You know, he, yeah. You know, make sure you get paid. So he was giving me a thousand dollars a beat back then. Now I'm I'm, I'm thinking about. Uh, the roller garden. I'm thinking about McDonald's and foot the strip. I'm thinking about. Um, I'm thinking about Mojo skating ring. I'm thinking about. I, what, and what I'm saying is, as far as painting a picture, with when you hear and don't do it mm -hmm. out in the streets, and you at these places like how is it? You like God damn because you you you're not even a rapper. So I'm, I'm gonna tell you that that's that's funny, right? So. I'm from West Oakland. Okay. Rich from East Oakland. You know, he got demos. He riding around playing demos, and his demos are getting stolen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, okay. People stealing okay. them. They okay. making dubs all uh -huh. over and everything. Uh -huh. Music all over town. Yeah, so I'm, I'm riding. I'm, I'm in West Oakland. I had one of my partners pull up on me playing one of our demos. He's like, man, you ain't up on this 415 stuff, yeah. DJ. <laughs> and they're not knowing it's just me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm one of them kind of guys, you know, I, I'm always playing the back the backfield so I'm I ain't saying I'm like oh yeah I heard about that yeah I heard about the 405 and that's my music the whole time be playing so I, I deal with that a lot I, everywhere I was going Sound I like was TC, huh? one of yeah, those songs yeah. kickback I couldn't believe Silent it killer <laughs> it was my music was playing everywhere I was I would be uh riding riding down the street in my my car you know and mm -hmm. somebody passed by me or stop at the light playing one of my playing your song I, yeah. I still right. it's, it's it happens today still, right? I bet. But I don't trip off it like I did back then. Right. Know, it was crazy back then. What what what's the um, what's the difference 
I mean, well, not the difference, but what's the process from doing don't do it, seeing the success, seeing the reaction of people to actually creating 415 as a group? Well, you the, it really ain't that much of a difference. I, everything that I did, the whole process that I did with making don't do it is the same process I was doing with the whole 415 situation. Okay. Only thing is some of the equipment was a little more sophisticated than what I was familiar with. Big. Okay. Go ahead. You know, I couldn't. So that we relied on the engineer to put a, to help us with a lot of the, you know, we knew what we wanted, right? But you know how to put it together, you know. So the engineer's job was to do that. Yeah, yeah. Back to the four one five. When mm -hmm. you're getting in the studio in the transition, right? Mm -hmm. From going from producing don't do it to getting into 415 you said it was just so you seen it y'all seen it at work y'all went bigger kind of yeah, like a well, double what it was it was rich rich he wanted he wanted a group see it was see i was his dj i had became his dj okay it was dj doing richie i was he was my rapper i was his dj okay and uh but he wanted he wanted a group because we always had to uh, the idea of being on stage performing. So he wanted to, you know, we wanted to have a nice little group on to be able to perform his songs and right. a group song. Right. So that's when we hooked up with D Lo. Okay. Okay. And, and he uh, who uh who already had D Lo on standby? He, who already knew Jay, D Lo? Jay got D Lo from wherever. Some you know, he found him from somewhere. Yeah. Where's D Lo from? He from East Oakland. Oh he from the East. Yeah. 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 And yeah, uh somewhere So after Don't Do It. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to this 415 situation with Jed. Mm -hmm. Where Where's the place you're recording at? Starlight Studio. Starlight. In Richmond. Mm -hmm. We was, uh, we was one, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a well-known studio, you know what I mean? Okay. It was uh, us and Digital Underground. We were the only ones in and out of the studio. Okay. And we, we had, you know, we was booking the studio like weeks at a time, you know, so we have a, we have a, we have one week and they have next week and then okay. we get the next week after them and it was it went on like that for maybe a year Y'all situation sound better than some of these stories we didn't heard but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> yeah we we was uh and it was doing block 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 outs that's what they were calling we do uh i think we was in there from eight in the morning to five can you recall the uh first song after don't do it uh yeah, snitches and bitches. I believe it was. Wow. Yeah, snitches and bitches. Now, and, um, now, so. my my curiosity ever since a child wanted to know was that song inspired by any situation? Not really. You know, uh, Rich is kind of <laughs> he kind of just um, he just took everything that was happening around that time. You know, the, the conversations in the streets situation that was going on in the streets whatever 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 was realistic that was recorded mm -hmm. in 88 or 80, 89 80, 88 everything 88. we was doing was in actually in the year 88 because it released in 89 what, what year mm. did D catch his case 88 I always felt like that was for D you know what I'm saying because <laughs> be, because on, you know because on the other song uh, uh, on 415 mm -hmm. you know he shout D out Mm -hmm. Right, and so you know, in peace to my homies from the Six Nine Crew. At this time, the streets is hot. Shit is going yeah. on. So I'm Whoa. thinking it's directly inspired by, and I'm thinking snitches and bitches is for Trevor. I well, ain't gonna lie. Let me, let me I, right. I thought it was for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know I said this song is for Trevor. My nigga <laughs> slipped in the game on a banana peel. He did everything it, that this motherfucker song. It might, it might said. have been. I didn't know because I wasn't familiar with East Oakland politics. Okay, I remember okay. I was only one there from West Oakland, so okay. I, I didn't. I don't really know what what Rich was, who he was referring to, or what right. he was talking about. So. Yeah, it was a possibility. It was a great motherfucking song. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm gonna tell you, we went to a radio station in Berkeley one time, and uh, it was me, Rich, and D. Lo, and uh, they was playing the, the clean version of the song. You know? Okay. And callers were calling in. They was like, "Yeah, man, uh, man, I love four one five. Man, that song, Snitches and Bees. Man, I love that song." 
And uh, it was like, right on, man. Yeah, but anyway, man, that nigga Jed the snitch. Oh, uh, is that right? <laughs> I was like, and, we, and me and Bloke and Rich, we looking at each other like, where that come from? Yeah, like, where that what, yeah. It just came where out that of the blue. You know, man, that was before Instagram, nigga. We didn't know what he was talking about, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. And you, yeah. you know what's crazy is um, just thinking about, you know, that time, and we'll get into that more later on, but just to think about what you was creating in that moment. That you was actually inspiring one of the, the not one of the biggest rapper ever, in Snoop Dogg. Yeah, and it's funny because when we first when I when me and Rich first met, we I, we met all of them. I ended up working with Nate Dogg. Okay, but yeah. um, before he died, um, rest in peace, Nate. Nate rest in peace, Nate Dogg. Sure. And when I first met Snoop. That's one of the things he told me. Yeah. He like, man, man, we used to we used to listen to y'all music, man, and be like, man, we we got to get our own thing cracking. Right. right you know, right. And they came with two one three. Right. Yeah. Based off of us, and it's crazy. I I heard the story from Snoop and Nate and Warren. That's crazy. At separate times. Separate times. Told the same story. Yeah. Told me the same story. Uh, Nate, he recorded with me before he passed. He stayed at my house for like a uh, almost two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a uh, D shot brought him to me. He was like, uh, he's out here trying to, you know, sell some hooks and get some money. He want to go back to, you know, right to L.A. with some money. And I was like that around that time. I had all the connections where I knew all the cats that was spending money. So he was hanging out with me and selling right. verses. And, you know, he, yeah. he went back okay. with a bag. Yeah. And he was to tell me, man. We used to listen to y'all all the time. I said, yeah, Snoop told me. That's know. crazy. You got to kick it with that man for a week straight? <laughs> yeah, at my house. He was coming to my house every day. Every day. And I was what on the phone. What kind of cat was that man? Uh, he, was, he was smooth. He was he was cool. I mean, all of them cool, to be honest with you. Him, Nate, I mean, Nate, Warren, and Snoop was all cool down earth kind of, good, you know, kind of cats, you know. I He was going through some something, though. I knew he was going through something. Nate. The time. Yeah, Nate. Oh, and you talking about his help? His help. But and we didn't know the, oh, the, yeah, yeah. We did the finance because right on, when it, when right around that time when that happened, Death Row had folded. Right, yeah. You know, uh, I think Daz was hanging. He was doing some business with uh, JT, the bigger figure, mm -hmm. and um, they all was just scrambling, trying to get you know get, get, get their Yeah, right. Snoop was over. They had went to no limit. No limit. He came over there right when I was there. You know, so it was crazy how it, shit changed. Yeah, man. you got show got to tell us about that transition yeah. over, over to no limit. So at so, snitches and bitches, y'all. Where, where do you go from there? When you when you listening to a young Richie Rich, right? Mm -hmm. um, who I always felt represented East Oakland well on that mic, right? Um, he did because Short did because. But in my mind, Short was always a character of himself. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That was it. Was always an act. I mean, truly, Short was never mm -hmm. a pimp. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So he had to he, embody something. You know what I'm saying? To, I know just what you're saying. You know what I right. mean? As a as an entertainer, he embodied what he had like when you what when you saw. think about the pimp rap game, Too Short is truly He Too Short was giving you some 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 uh, some stories. He was a story. great storyteller. Rhyme rhyme he was giving you stories in a rhyme form. Right, right. Right. And what 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 Rich wanted to do or what he was doing, he was giving you uh, a little beyond that, right? He was, he was, he was giving you a reality. He was check. giving reality, that, and that's what our music had became reality music. So, what he was doing was he was rapping about what the streets of Oakland was about at that time: hustling, right. getting money, right? Flossing and showing what, how you you know your work, right? And what I was doing was trying to create the sound for that. So, right. what whatever I felt was the sound, you know, back then the old the OGs. Like, like we said earlier, there was no real rap music. Mm -hmm. So we used, to, we used to listen to a lot of old school music like um, Bounce, Doom, Doom, you know, all right, those, those right, kind of tracks. Right, right. So I was trying to come up with that that same feel. Because back mm -hmm. then we used to like the bass lines. Mm -hmm. So I would put bass lines in the music that I was making. Mm -hmm. Some Maybe your favorite bass line from one of your favorite old school records back mm -hmm. then. And Rich was rapping to it. So that's how that whole sound came about. If you notice on all the 415 records, it all got a certain, it, all, all of them got different tempos, mm -hmm. different styles, but they still give you that same street edge right. feel. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like gangster rap. It's more, that's right. what I call mob music. Right, that's mob music. That's mob sure. music, right. For sure. So that's what I was trying to do because 
we knew Short sure had that. He was the man back then. Yeah, yeah. and we wanted Funky to do. Baseline. Yeah, and they, we that was Oakland Funk. Right, that was Oakland what he was Funk. Doing. What he was doing. Yeah, and we wanted to take it. and all this shit. Right, and we wanted to take it to the mob. Yeah, and and you know it's crazy because just that this just that sound and that element was so it was so what was going on at the time like the transition of from what the streets had become mm -hmm. like from you know even the the type of drugs that was being sold oh, yeah. to the type of uh gangsters that was created because of the type of drugs that was being sold me and That's black true. had a conversation about that earlier is the crack epidemic was explode it was explosive like mm -hmm. young cats had more money than anybody had ever seen in no time right they did. you know what i mean mm -hmm. it was money falling out the sky right that shit was just for young young men you know it but, was different but they also had a certain flair a certain flair you know like today today's young hustlers they they loud with everything they do right you know, we was sure. able we knew how to be loud without looking like we trying to be loud could you